Hello friends. Today we are going to learn about the relative dating methods. Dating techniques are procedures used by scientists to determine the age of a specimen or a series of events. The dating of remains is essential in order to place finds in correct relation to one another and to understand what was present at a given time and place. The two main types of dating methods are relative dating and absolute dating. Relative dating fixes a time frame in relation to other strata or material. It can only define the antiquity in terms of older or younger. These methods cannot tell the exact age of an object in number of years. Before the advent of absolute dating methods in the 20th century, nearly all dating was relative. Stratigraphy The main relative dating method is stratigraphy, which is the study of layers of rocks or the objects embedded within those layers. The method is based on the assumption which nearly always holds true that deeper layers of rock were deposited earlier in earth's history and thus are older than more shallow layers. The successive layers of rock represent successive intervals of time. Stratigraphy is based on the law of superposition. Like a layer cake, the lowest layers must have been formed first. Upper strata were formed or deposited later than lower strata. Stratigraphy has two related subfields: lithostratigraphy and biostratigraphy. Lithostratigraphy is the geological science associated with the study of strata or rock layers. Major focuses include geochronology, comparative geology and petrology. In general, a stratum will be primarily igneous or sedimentary relating to how the rock was formed. Biostratigraphy or paleontologic stratigraphy is based on fossil evidence in the rock layers. Strata from widespread locations containing the same fossil fauna and flora are said to be correlatable in time. Biologic stratigraphy was based on principle of faunal succession, first recognized at the beginning of the 19th century by William Smith. The principle of faunal succession, also known as the law of faunal succession, is based on the observation that sedimentary rock strata contain fossilized flora and fauna and that these fossils succeed each other vertically in a specific reliable order that can be identified over wide horizontal distances the principle was one of the first and most powerful lines of evidence for biological evolution it provides strong evidence for speciation and extinction of species the geological time scale was developed during the 19th century based on the evidence of biologic stratigraphy and faunal succession steno's laws of stratigraphy nicolas steno was a 17th century danish geologist his laws describe the patterns in which rock layers are deposited the law of superposition states that younger layers of rock sit on top of older layers law of original horizontality states that layers of sedimentary rock are originally deposited flat this is the original orientation whereas this is the orientation after tilting or folding of surface law of cross cutting relationships here rock layers a and b must be older than the intrusion c that disturbs them law of lateral continuity states that layers of rock are continuous until they encounter other solid bodies that block their deposition or until they are acted upon by agents that appeared after deposition took place next dating method is typology typology is a method that compares reference objects in order to classify them according to their similarity or dissimilarity and link them to a specific context or period it generally allows archaeologists to identify the period to which a cultural site or object belongs without specifying the date for example cars we can see that 
cars have changed in form and function to the years knowing this we can place a car in time by merely looking at its form these present many characteristics that are used for comparing them such as morphology and raw materials in the case of stone tools decorative techniques and motifs in the case of ceramics next method is sequence dating or seriation the style of an artifact like a stone tool or a piece of pottery also changes regularly over time archaeologists use changes in trends to figure out how old a site is based on the style of artifacts they find before seriation can be used as a dating technique artifacts need to be put into their typological sequence the method is based on the fact that artifacts change in predictable ways through time among all other artifacts it is found that pottery changes with time frequently and a sequence of pottery design can thus be worked out This method was developed by the Egyptologist Sir William Matthew Flinders Petrie. By linking styles of pottery with different time periods, he was able to establish the relative chronology of the site. The sequence dating method allowed the relative dating of any given pre-dynastic Egypt site to be ascertained by examining the handles on pottery, general form of pieces, and the stratigraphic layer it was found in. Archaeologists examine artifacts. They notice how the different styles are common or trendy at different times. While one style may be popular now, it likely will have been less popular later. So the more popular it is, more example of it archaeologist will find. If you take another look at the Honda Accord, you can see how the style of the 1982 model slowly changed into the style of the 2012. cross dating it is the method of dating objects or fossils or rocks with the chronology of another site cross dating is a technique used to take advantage of consistencies in stratigraphy between parts of a site or different sites and objects or strata with a known relative chronology when certain types of artifacts or objects for example coins pottery arrowheads with known chronology are found in different sites then according to cross dating sites are considered roughly of the same age a specialized form of cross dating using animal and plant fossils is known as biostratigraphy flooring dating flooring dating is a method that measures the amount of fluoride absorbed by bones in order to determine their relative age Fluorine dating relies on the discovery that bone mineral calcium hydroxyapatite will absorb fluoride ions if during burial it is exposed to groundwater that contains fluoride. Groundwater and soil in most part of the world contain small amount of fluoride and these ions can replace the hydroxyl ions in bone mineral to form fluoroapatite. In this way the chemically unstable calcium hydroxyapatite is gradually replaced by the more stable fluoroapatite from the amount of absorbed fluoride in the atom the time that the atom has been in the soil can be estimated older bones have more fluorine this test was used to easily identify that the piltdown man was forged the piltdown man was a paleoanthropological fraud in which bone fragments were presented as the fossilized remains of a previously unknown early human the falsity of the hoax was demonstrated in 1953 there are also some limitations for the fluorine analysis as not all objects absorb fluorine at the same rate this also undermines the accuracy of such a dating technique although this can be compensated by accommodating the rate of absorption in calculations such an accommodation tends to have a rather large margin of error nitrogen dating nitrogen is a fairly major constituent of bone about 4% and as bone collagen decomposes it gradually releases the nitrogen at a fairly uniform rate 
Nitrogen dating relies on the reliable breakdown and release of amino acids from bone samples to estimate the age of the object. The exact rate of decay depends on the burial environment, but the relative ages of samples from the same environment can be compared by measuring the remaining nitrogen content. Lesser is the nitrogen content, older is the fossil. Compared to other dating techniques, nitrogen dating can be unreliable because leaching from bone is dependent on temperature, soil pH, groundwater and the presence of microorganisms that digest nitrogen rich elements like collagen. Next method is palynology. Palynology is the study of pollen grains and other spores. Each year Seed bearing plants release large number of pollen grains. This process results in a rain of pollen that falls over many type of environments. Pollen that ends up in the leg beds or peat box is the most likely to be preserved. But pollen may also become fossilized in arid conditions if the soil is acidic or cool. Scientists can develop a pollen chronology or calendar by noting which species of pollen were deposited earlier in time. The unit of the calendar is the pollen zone. A pollen zone is a period of time in which a particular species is much more abundant than any other species of the time. In most cases, this tells us about the climate of the period because most plants only thrive in specific climatic conditions. Changes in pollen zones can also indicate changes in human activities, such as massive deforestation or new type of farming. Pasture for grazing livestock are distinguishable from fields of grain. So, changes in the use of the land over time are recorded in the pollen history. Patination Patination is the production by oxidation of a green or brown film on the surface of bronze or similar metals. It means the chemical alterations of rock or other metallic artifact surfaces exposed to atmospheric conditions. The amount of patina on the stone is an index of its age, valuable for relative placement of the stone artifact in the technological development. Patination is used when multiple artifacts of the same type are found in the same area and under the same conditions. The use of this technique is to determine the age of the artifacts relative to the others by comparing the thickness of the patina on them. This demonstrates that those tools which lie in the bottom level may have more patina than those in the upper levels. The chemical alterations of the stone are usually brought about by the action of iron oxides through time. A.J.H. H. Goodwin, who worked extensively on the patination in 1960, lists many variables involved in patina formation, as well as different types of patination that can be used fruitfully for the tools from stratified deposits. The different types of tools from the rival gravels, terraces of rivers, or legs can be differentiated in the relative amount of patina, on the basis of which the relative ages can be assigned on the artifacts. Obsidian Hydration Dating Obsidian Hydration Dating is a geochemical method of determining age in either absolute or relative terms of an artifact made of obsidian. Obsidian is a volcanic glass that was used by prehistoric people as a raw material in the manufacture of stone tools, such as projectile points, knives or other cutting tools through napping or breaking of pieces in a controlled manner, such as pressure flaking. Obsidian obeys the property of mineral hydration and absorbs water when exposed to air at well-defined rate. When an unworked nodule of obsidian is initially fractured, there is 0.2% water present. Over time, water slowly diffuses into the artifact, forming a narrow band, rim or rind 
that can be seen and measured with many different techniques. The hydration process continues until the fresh obsidian surface contains about 3.5% water. This is the saturation point. Hydration forms at different rates on different obsidians. Three steps are required to determine a calendar date from an obsidian artifact. These are the determination of the hydration rate, the thickness of the hydration ring, the soil temperature and soil relative humidity at the archaeological site. The obsidian hydration dating has some limitations. These limitations are physical ones. It takes several centuries for a detectable rind to be created and rinds over 50 microns tend to crumble. The rate of hydration is not uniform throughout the world. Variation exists in temperature over time from site to site. Artifact reuse may lead to an error. For example, one person fashions a tool out of an obsidian nodule and uses it to skin a deer. Several hundred years later, a second person finds the tool, resharpens it, uses it to shave the bark off of a tree branch. The archaeologist would be led to believe by this erroneous date that arrow production started several hundred years earlier than what was expected. This was all about relative dating methods. I hope this is clear to you now. Thank you.